specific answers. And he was talking about this seven-year period because he was dealing with talking to Jews about Israel. And so what Jesus said had very little or nothing to do with the church in the age which we live. But it's talking about his second coming, which will take place here at the end of the seven years. Which will begin a 1,000 year reign of Jesus Christ on the earth. This is known as the kingdom, the millennial kingdom, the millennium. And there are a lot of words that are, are used, or a lot of terms used for that period of time. But right now, we're living in the church age. When this ends, this seven year period will be a time, as the Bible describes, of great tribulation, such as never has been seen before and will never be seen again. And it will be a time of judgment when the wrath of God falls on all mankind and the wrath of Satan falls on the Jews. We have, to, we have to kind of keep those straight because we have to understand that the nation of Israel will be attacked greatly by Satan during this time. But that's where, that's where things are right now. And so when we look at Matthew chapter 24 and we start reading about the fact that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall the days of the coming of the Son of Man be. We're talking about a seven-year seven year period here known as the tribulation period. And this will last for seven years. The church is gone. The church was raptured out here at the end of the church age. And during this tribulation period, that is when Things are going to go back to the way they were during the days of Noah. Now, we've just spent the last 50 minutes talking about what the days of Noah were going to be like, or what they were like. And so, when we look back, and we look at Genesis chapter 6, and we say, okay, fallen angels took on bodies, they married women, and they had this race of beings called the Nephilim, who were obviously very mighty, very powerful, and very, very evil, that means that the tribulation period is going to be exactly the same thing. And so, and so when we come, we're going to take a little break here in a second, and when we come back, we'll talk about the correlation between the days of Noah and the tribulation period. Let's look once again at the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and starting in verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, here's the interesting part that we've been looking at for the last hour or so, is that we have established the fact that the fallen angels took on human bodies, uh, married human women, mortal women, and engendered a race called the Nephilim. They did this uh, specifically due to Satan's plan, to destroy the gene pool that would produce the Messiah from the seed of the woman. And we looked at all of that earlier. So what we have to look at now as we go forward and look into the future, and we look at this period that was spoken of by Jesus at this point in time, the seven-year tribulation period. We are told here in Matthew 24 that as it was of Noah, so shall the days of the coming of the Son of Man be. Which means that after the church is gone, we said the church is taken out by the rapture of the church here, prior to the time of the seven year tribulation period, this means that during this time, once again, Nephilim will be born and will live and will be the mighty men that they were as they were of old they will come back and once again walk on the earth as the offspring of fallen angels and human beings. So if that is what Jesus Christ is talking about here, 
we see some very significant things happening today. And those things that are happening have to relate, as we mentioned briefly before, with the UFO phenomenon. I have an article here, and I, and I know you can't see it very well, but it's from the state newspaper in Columbia, South Carolina, and the date on this article is June, June 22, 1996. And it's a little bit of an amusing little cartoon on the front that says here, Into some lives a little gray must fall. And uh, can you zoom in and get a, a close-up of this? I don't know if I don't, I don't want to hold it and shake it too much. Okay, good. But into a, some lives a little gray must fall. And this article is talking about the abduction of individuals by extraterrestrials and aliens. Now, we alluded to the fact earlier that it's a good possibility that these aliens and I would go further to even say a good possibility. We believe that these aliens are nothing more than fallen angels. The Naiha Elohim, as we learned back in the book of Genesis. Not only that, the UFOs are interdimensional craft where they travel from one dimension to the other so they can make their way back and forth from our dimension into the spirit world once they've been embodied. And so if we have these beings, now remember, fallen angels, we don't want to get the fallen angels mixed up with the Nephilim, but the Benai Ha Elohim, are the angels. And they are the ones that actually become embodied. Those are the actual guys, if we want to call them aliens, the, uh, the pilots of UFOs, or whatever, the greys, the reptilians, the Pleiadians, whatever they want to be called, these, into, these fallen angels are the ones piloting these craft, and they're doing all the foolishness that's going on. Now, here's, in this article, I'm just going to read a couple of, uh, a couple of sentences for you, but uh, this talks about an individual who... Uh, who was abducted by a UFO. She came home from a date one night uh, and she felt the side of her bed sag and she, it says she started a little and turned to see someone or something had sat down beside her. Uh, and, um, and it goes on to say that, uh, that it was strange and, uh, and next thing she knew she woke up and didn't remember what it was that happened to her. And, um, and when they found out by putting her under hypnosis what had happened, she had been abducted by these gray aliens or the, uh, the pilots of the UFOs. And, um, and it says here in this article that what happens to people that are abducted, it says there they are physically examined, mentally tested by telepathy, and some sort of procedure is formed on, performed on them. There are reports of small strange objects later found in their bodies. There are often physical signs of invasion such as scars. And most bizarre, some women, and this is the key, feel they have been impregnated by an alien for, to produce a hybrid fetus. Okay? Benai Elohim, again, plus a mortal woman. And we put this up here a while ago. Equals Nephilim but a Nephilim would certainly come from a hybrid fetus because a hybrid fetus would be nothing more than the fetus or child that was produced by a union between a mortal woman and a fallen angel. So we see here that this is one of the things that uh, that happens to women especially when they are taken up and abducted by UFOs. As a matter of fact, Chuck Missler and Mark Eastman have written a book, and I've got a copy of the book here somewhere, by the name of Alien Encounters. We highly recommend this book on this subject that is uh, done by, uh, by Chuck Missler. They went together on this book, and they go so far as to say in this book that uh, that the main thing that happens in, in the uh, abduction of humans by aliens is the implanting 